Friends, I have an appeal for you today. If you want to better your relationship with God, if you want to get closer and understand him a little bit more, my appeal to you today is to subscribe. There's a button down below and also hit the little bell because it's gonna let you know when all of our videos go up on K2NL every single Monday right here. So hit the subscribe button, we're waiting for you. So let's get ready because today we are gonna talk about an issue of faith. And we're gonna be talking about the woman with the issue of blood. Okay, so this story is kind of like awkward because it's like, well, how can I relate to somebody in the Bible whose issue I've never had? I'm going to give you a little bit of insight, sprinkle a little bit of wisdom on top of this and revelation so that you can understand better. Stay tuned, subscribe, comment, like, thumbs up. Need you to do it now. All right, guys, stay tuned. Get ready. Get your Bible out. Get your Bible out. Hey, get your Bible out. So flip with me to Mark 5, verse 25 through 34. And before we even begin the story, we need to understand the context. So this woman is in a crowd. Jesus is traveling to heal Jairus' daughter. And there's a huge crowd all around him. And this woman, a certain woman who has not been named, is in this crowd. And it says that she's had an issue of blood for 12 long years years so the first thing that i noted was the fact that she remained unnamed there's so many people in the bible big characters little characters who get names but this certain random woman remains unnamed and i want to interject to you want to suggest to you that possibly she's remaining unnamed so that you can step into her shoes and connect with the vulnerability of her story because this no doubt is a issue of faith this woman has been suffering for 12 long years and it says that she was bleeding now maybe you're a guy and you don't know what it means to bleed or you have no experience or connection with that you're like how am i going to connect with this woman how am i going to connect with her bleeding or maybe you're just a woman a girl whoever and you've never bled for that long thank god right so i want you to understand that leviticus 11 there's a scripture there and it tells us that the life of something resides in the blood. So we know that if you don't have blood or if you continue to bleed for too long that you could possibly die. So the life of something is in the blood. So literally as she's bleeding, life is draining out of her. Have you ever been in a situation, has something ever stirred up in your life that caused you to feel as if life was being sucked from you, as if you were being drained? Your financial situation, you had more uh, months, more bills than money, or maybe you had a health complication where you were struggling to figure out how you were going to be cured or maybe it went on too long and you've been going to the doctor constantly and nothing is being fixed or maybe there's a generational thing in your family that's going on and you're struggling with it and everything seems like it's not getting better but just like this woman just like it describes in these verses here it only got worse so I want you to put yourself into her situation. Maybe you haven't been bleeding for 12 long years, but maybe you've been suffering with something, struggling with something, and you've done all that you could do and nothing is coming to fix it. So we have this woman and she's in this crowd and she's trying to get to Jesus. So I want you to understand some other things about this because Leviticus, the book of the law, tells us that there's a certain... Um, odd thing about her being in this crowd because she's risking it all. It tells us already that she went to every doctor, that she tried every physician, that she spent all of her money, that she asked all of her friends everything that she could do so that she could get outside of this issue because she had to be separate. It says that when a woman is bleeding like this, that as long as she's bleeding, she is to be separate. 
You're not to touch her clothes. You're not to um, get near her. Anything that comes into contact with her or anything that's touched her body that possibly could have blood on it is considered unclean. So she's now separated because of her condition. So have you ever felt that you had a situation going on in your life that caused you to be separate, caused you to be less than, caused you not to be able to experience the fullness that life has promised us? Because we know from the Bible that we are supposed to experience a fullness of life. And she's not experiencing this. And it's been going on again for 12 long years. So there's a certain desperation that is birthed in our situations not being fixed. And a lot of times, the only time that we reach out to God, only time we step into faith or decide to pursue faith is when we get into our situations that cannot be fixed. Maybe this was God's way of introducing himself to her, saying, I know that you've tried everything. I know that you did everything that you thought logically made sense, but I need you to try me. I need you to see that I am a healer, that I'm a deliverer, that I'm the one that's gonna make sure you got enough money in your pocket. I'm gonna take care of every single one of your needs. There's a desperation birthed in this moment, in these 12 years that she's been experiencing this type of um, issue, okay? So in her desperation, she steps out and she risks it all. After she's used all her money, talked to everybody that she could, after she's been separated and felt like an outcast, she is now trying God. And she gets into the crowd as Jesus is passing by. And she has it ingrained in her mind, even after 12 long years, that this situation can still be fixed. So I want to ask you today, whatever situation you're identifying with, whatever vulnerable circumstance you're experiencing right now, is there still a little bit of faith in your heart, in your mind, that's going to cause you to step out and to risk it all? Because that's what faith is about. It's about walking in what you can't see. It says that we don't walk by sight. We don't walk by what we see. We don't walk by our circumstance or however long it's been, but we walk by faith. The just shall walk by faith. So this woman has enduring faith. She still has this image in her mind that she's going to live an abundant life, that things won't always be this way. And so she presses for that, okay? So she gets into this crowd, she gets into the press, and she says, you know what? If I can just touch the hem of his garment, if I can just barely grab a hold of the end of his clothing, that I will be healed and whole that all of my issues are going to be fixed because I came into contact with this Savior. You know, many times we have faith for other people or we decide to apply our faith for other people and we say, you know, I'm going to pray for so-and-so. I'm going to reach out to them and encourage them and stuff like that. But this woman had the heart to encourage herself. She said, I'm going to be made whole if I touch his garment. And it's amazing how when we get into the presence of God, the presence of real men and women of God, how they that can rub off on us. How we know that through them, something will be transacted, that something will transpire because we've gotten into the presence of the living God. So as she reaches out and touches his garment, it says that she felt that the plague left her body. This issue that she'd been having for 12 long years was now gone just by touching him. Why, why did it happen this way? Because she believed. Now, I want you to reimagine this because she's in this crowd and Jesus says, he turns around, he whips around, he like, somebody just touched me. Something a little bit different happened. This touch was a little bit different than the one that I've been feeling from all these people in this crowd all around me. And his disciples are like, Jesus, there's so many people in this crowd. You want us to let you know who touched you? We really don't know. He said, I felt virtue leave my body. So what was different from the woman with the issue of blood? What was different from her touch um, that allowed power to leave God, Jesus' body and to come and affect her life and, leave, and this plague to leave her as it did just in that instant? Well, I want to interject to you, suggest to you that her touch was different because she not only um, touched him, but she agreed. The Bible tells us that when we touch and agree that Jesus will be in the midst, and literally she's touching Jesus, but as we touch and agree that whatever we ask, God shall do. 
So not only was she touching him or bumping into him as everybody else did, but she agreed with who it is that he was. She agreed by faith that he was the son of God. She agreed by faith that she could be made whole. She agreed by faith that this issue was going to leave her body. And so our question, as we've placed ourselves into this story, is how do we touch and agree with God to get our healing, to get our deliverance, um, to stop those issues that we've been suffering with, to cease those situations that have caused life to be drained from us? How do we stop those situations? How do we touch and agree? Do we go and pray with someone? Well, Think of it this way, because Jesus is not physically here. Yes, he dwells inside of us, but he's not physically here with us. So who do we have left besides the men and women of God that we serve to touch and agree with? So how can I touch and agree with the man of God for my deliverance? You can touch and agree by praying for them, by supporting them, by helping them, by sowing into them. You know, there's so many different things that we can do to touch and agree with men and women of God to get our healing. And the way that we do that is we walk by faith. We put faith on our touching and our agreement with them. That as we touch and agree with them, that God will see it and that Jesus will be in the midst, that God will be in the midst and he will answer the request that we have put before him. So I want us to touch and agree today. Maybe you are not connected with a church. Maybe you are not connected with a body of believers. And I suggest to you today to go ahead and get back in fellowship, get back connected to a body of believers, a church, whoever, a Bible believing church, because at this point, you've done all that you could do. You sought out everybody, you did it by logic, you did it by strategy, and so far it's only getting worse. But if you touch and believe, maybe this will be your introduction to God. Maybe this will be him showing you that you need him more than anything. So I want to um, just interject that to you today, that the woman with the issue of blood is no different than you or I but that she walked by faith. And instead of allowing this thing to continue, she decided to see herself in a position healed, see herself in a position whole, see herself in a position of abundance where she no longer was separated, where her issues in life no longer um, pulled her away from everybody else or caused her to be down. Instead, she got connected. She touched and agreed. She walked by faith. She endured. She kept going. She did not faint, but she reaped her harvest. And that she always was caused to triumph by the faith that she walked in. So today, walk by faith. Believe God. Touch and agree with a man or woman of God today for your healing. Get back connected with them. And I guarantee that God is going to bless you for it. He's going to bless you for your efforts, for your faith. And that even though this woman remains unnamed, she gave God glory. It says that Jesus turned around and she was scared. She was like, oh my God, this was crazy. You know, sometimes the growth of your faith can be a, a scary situation. But she walked by faith. And as Jesus turned around and figured out that it was her after she con that it was her that touched the hem of Jesus' garment. He said, you know what? It's okay. You know, he comforted her. He said, it's okay. And I want to comfort you today. It is okay. If it's not okay right now, it's going to be okay as you touch and agree that not only will you be healed by your faith, but that God will make you whole. Pursue your healing. Pursue that thing. And if you do it with God, you know, there's a thing on Instagram that says, yeah, try again, but with me, with God. Try it again with God. No matter how long it's been, no matter how long you've suffered, God is able to help you, to heal you, to supply each and every one of your needs because he lives in abundance and he desires that you live in abundance too with him as his son, as his daughter. So God bless you today. I hope that this message blessed you. I know it blessed me. There's so much here in this story that I could have talked about. And I hope that you all will stay tuned and leave some comments below as to how this blessed you, how this impacted you. Maybe some points that I didn't bring up. So I'll see you next week here on K Danelle. Go ahead and subscribe. I love you guys. I'll see you next week.